Hello and welcome to the video. This video is all about these things here, WS2812 addressable LEDs. Now the reason I'm making this video is because this isn't a new topic. This has actually been around since I think I did my first video back in early 2015. And it's thanks to a gentleman called Dominic Clifton who included the code to run these addressable LEDs into flight controllers back in the days of clean flight that now we have the ability to kind of do and have these LEDs pretty much anywhere and address them. Now, I've not done a lot with WS2812 LEDs in the subsequent years because, to be honest, I don't tend to fly in darker conditions. However, we are starting to get models like the He-Wing Ranger T1 that actually has addressable LEDs out on the tips of the wing. Now, unfortunately, they didn't wire them in a very smart way, but it is an interesting thing to start to see more models coming out that have these addressable LEDs on them. Now, things like iNav do have the ability with things like Betaflight and other flight control systems to actually run these LEDs. So I thought, you know what, let me do a refresher. So if you are buying something like one of the modern wings that's coming out that have addressable LEDs in, you know how it all works. Now these addressable LEDs come in lots and shapes and sizes. You can get them as individual chips like this. Uh, this is what they actually look like in the packet. You can just break one off. I broke one off here to make this little cable and you can connect them in lots of different ways. If we actually go on to the Maytech website, you can see here that this is a very standard way we all used to do it back in the early days. This is like a something that was actually made for Arduino really, I think it was where you have all of these particular LEDs. And you'll find that on all of these, there's something called a digital in and digital out. Digital in is you kind of connect it to the flight controller or the um, LED that's upstream. So if I was gonna connect another LED strip to this one so that I had rather than eight LEDs, I had 16, I would connect the five volts and ground just like it's done here, but I would rather than have the blue wire going back to the flight controller, I would connect the signal wire, which is what this blue wire is, from the digital out into the digital in pin on the next lot. So you can chain, chain them up and you can configure them in lots and lots of different ways. So let me show you how you do this in iNav because uh, I'll be honest, when I had to do this um, to play around with my Ranger T1, I had to think about it. So. First of all, let me actually plug the flight controller in because most of the time the LEDs are not going to be powered. Um, now, the way this LED is configured is configured to be red and flashing, but we'll change all that. So let me plug it into the computer. Uh, we will click on connect and then let's go down to the LED tab. So you think this is where it all happens, the LED strip. And what I've got here, I've actually got two LEDs, but let's clear all and we can start again. So if I save that now, we should see that the LED has stopped flashing. So you can see here in the features that there's actually the ability to turn it on by just turning on multicolor RGB LED strip support. If you turn that on here, then it's enabled. You can see that it's turned on if you go into the CLI. And if you type in feature, then you can see very clearly it actually says here that LED strip is enabled. What you have to do then is we'll go back uh, into the LED strip tab. And it just looks like you can start like putting numbers on here and away you go. How this is all laid out is a little bit confusing um, and it hasn't gone much better in the last seven years. But the way it works is that you have something called a wire ordering mode that you have to do first and then you can actually set all the different functions and colors. Now, why do we need a wire ordering mode? Well, if we were imagining that we are looking at a, a fixed wing model, it might be how you physically wired the LEDs onto the model. So it might be that the first LED is out on the left hand wing, the second LED is on the right hand wing, uh, so left and right hand wings, there might be uh, one in the nose, there might be a flasher, and then there might be a navigation light on the tail, but that is physically how they're wired together. So the wires go to this one, to this one, to this one, this one, this one, that's how it's all put together on the flight controller. 
you have to do the wiring ordering mode first. If we click on again, we'll turn that off. And now you can just about see that these numbers are there. Now we can actually click on them and we can say what they are. So with the actual LED highlighted, it's a really hard to see this. I hope they make it easier in the future. Okay, and we can have up to 32 addressed. We can pick the the function. We can have color, modes and orientation. You can see all the different ones you've got. So for the simple one, let's go for color. Okay, and then we can also uh, pick the orientation and color. And this is for some of the more advanced modes where you need to know, um, you know, maybe you want to know the only lights up in particular orientations or it's on the uh, up uh, upper part of the aircraft or the down part of the aircraft. Why don't you do any of that jazz? We'll just leave it as a standard thing. Let's pick a nice color. We'll go for a lovely purple and we'll click on save. And here on the desk, immediately the LED has come on. So to change the color, all I need to do is click on the color I'm interested. Let's go for a nice orange, click on save. More of a yellow color, isn't it, that one? So we can just choose whichever color we want and by clicking, clicking save, there we go. So what we could do is we could have, I don't know, if we're doing a classic plane, maybe on the left hand side, we would have something like, that's going to be red. On the right hand side, we have a nice green LED. Oops, of course we've got to tell it its color. See, this is the issue that you've got, you've got to remember to do all this stuff. On the front, we might want a white light Come on, keep remembering color. I wish it would default to color. Uh, and then maybe at the back, you've got another white light. Guess what, color. And then maybe at the bottom, I don't know, you want a blue light or something just for yourself. Every time. You can also make them flash. So for example, maybe these are navigation lights so we can have them blink always and blink always there we go we can have a color modifier for the throttle so that's quite handy say for example you wanted to put an led in a ring of leds um, because if you go here on the matex website again although it shows here just this simple strip you can get these leds in lots of different types including uh, rings of leds that some people kind of fit in the exhaust area of an EDF. So that would be a cool thing to be able to have it as a, um, I don't know, a bright orange and have it modified by the throttle. Larson scanner is a fun one that actually has, if you have a, a set of LEDs like this, it'll actually sweep backwards and forwards like the eye of Kit in Knight Rider. And you can also overlay warnings and other things as well. So this is how you would set it up remembering to do save every single time. So let's just play. Now at the moment we only have one LED. That's the first one. The first LED is um, logically called zero. Let's just play with him and do some other things. Let's turn him as blink always and click save. So there we go with a nice double blink, which is very nice for aircraft. Uh, we could have it for blink on landing. There are loads of different things that we can do. So hopefully that is interesting for those of you that are looking to set this up. There's only a couple of things you need to remember in iNav. The big one is you've got to remember to turn the feature on and you're turning LED strip on. Once that is on and saved, then you can actually go into the LED tab and you can then first of all use the wire ordering mode to set it up very very quickly let me just show you so say for example you have that led strip of eight leds let's clear them all like we had in here how i would configure this see of leds i would just if it was on the back of something like a quadcopter because i wanted you know the kit larson scanner i do wire ordering mode and i just put them in a big list like that. So although it finishes seven, we have eight because it starts at zero. So that's all that done. And then put each one to the color red and turn on the Larson scanner and do that for each individual one. And that would be a way to kind of have and set up, you know, like the 
kit car from Knight Rider at the front. So hopefully that's interesting and that is the way to do it. So if you have something like a modern wing that's starting to come with something like addressable LEDs, that's how you'd set them up in iNav. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.